Hey guys and welcome to another Tuesday bonus video. I just finished checking out the next future release of DOSBox staging and there are two really important updates that I want to share with you. The first one is called Adaptive CRT Shaders and then we also have 3 dfx Voodoo support. I gave the heads up on my Patreon page. I'm now back in Australia and finally getting around to making a video. So CRT shaders with DOSBox staging, it's all about how the image looks out of the box. You know what DOSBox looks like, very razor sharp pixels, but that's not what CRT monitors looked like. They had this nice analog uh, CRT magic going on, some sort of scan lines, a bit of fuzziness, but still quite sharp compared to arcade or home computer monitors and that's what CRT shaders are all about to give you an image that looks much closer to what it would look like on a CRT monitor. Adaptive CRT shaders takes this to a new level because there are lots of variables. Every monitor has a different resolution. You might have a 1080p monitor, maybe you have a 1440p monitor or you're running a 4k screen like I do. Games also have different resolutions. Most of them run at 320 by 200 but some have a higher resolution and we're also dealing with aspect ratios and the shape and size of the pixels. So what adaptive CT shaders, uh, what they do for you is it changes the shader on the fly depending on what content you're playing, depending on what monitor you have and it is absolutely beautiful. For example, if you grew up with a 286 computer and an EGA monitor, you would get that beautiful thick scan lines. However, if like me, you had a 386 or 486 with a VGA monitor, then the image would look totally different. You would get something called double scanned. You would see very thin scan lines and quite a different experience. Let's have a look at some games. Here we have F19 Stealth. Fighter. This game supports EGA graphics and yeah, the adaptive shader, it recognizes the resolution of the game. It recognizes that it is EGA and it also recognizes the resolution, the 4K resolution of the monitor and then adjusts everything in the background and we're getting a really nice image with those thick scan lines. Here we have another game. This is Sierra's Space Quest. Three, this time with the Roland MT32 music which DOSBox staging also supports and again we're getting beautiful graphics. Do pay attention to the text. The adaptive scalers they use the pixel perfect feature that means all the pixels are the same uh, size which means the text is very easy to read. There is a slight cost to that with the aspect ratio and you will lose out a little bit of vertical space at the top and the bottom of the screen. I don't think that's too big of a deal because back in those days most monitors were 14 or 15, maybe 17 inch. So modern computer monitors these days are actually quite large and it will actually look a little bit nicer if the image is slightly reduced. Let's check out a more modern DOS game. This is Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, one of my absolute favorite all-time point-and-click adventures. Also with the MT32 music running in the background. This has VGA graphics, 256 colors, looks absolutely beautiful. And now DOSBox staging picks a scaler to give you that double scanned look. If you look very carefully, uh, you need to really watch this on a large 4K TV to get all the detail. If you look really closely, you can see some thin scan lines going on, just like on the real thing, including some analog CRT fuzziness and blurriness, but just very slight. So it does a really good job at yeah, mimicking what it would look like on a CRT monitor. The adaptive nature works on the fly. Even if you toggle between full screen and window mode, it all happens in the background, choosing the best shader for your configuration. And also, it can deal with games that like to change resolution throughout the game. Here we have a good example. This is a adventure game. It is from Legend, Frederick Paul's Gateway. And we have 320 by 200 
VGA graphics during the animations, but then the actual game runs at a higher resolution mode. I believe it's 640 by 350. So here, yeah, the shaders work beautifully, swapping out the shaders in the background to make both type of content look absolutely beautiful. So this is the out of the box default behavior going forward with DOSBox staging. But of course, you can manually override the behavior. If you prefer to have a more machine centric setting, you can configure the DOSBox configuration file and say, well, let's say I have a VGA machine. I want to have double scanned VGA CRT look, no matter what game I'm playing, even if I play EGA games. It's one change you have to do in the DOSBox config file and off you go. CRT Auto Arcade, this one is really fun. It replicates the image of an arcade or an yeah, Amiga home computer monitor. Think of the Philips CM8833 connected with SCART RGB, very popular in Europe and it had a very unique look. And this, yeah, I think this is a shout out to the Amiga fans out there. There are many PC ports from uh, classic Amiga games. And if you play them on a PC, they might look a little bit wrong. Here we have a good example. This is the PC version of Turrican 2, which arguably is more superior to the Amiga version. Yes, I said it. We have more colors, different assets, no slowdowns, and also higher polyphony. So meaning it can, the Sound Blaster 16 can play more voices at the same time. But with the pixel look, it looks a little bit too sharp. And here the CRT filter does a really good job at replicating this classic Amiga look. And finally, we have 3DFX Voodoo support. So let's check out Tomb Raider, the DOS version with the 3DFX Voodoo patch. We get 640 by 480 graphics. With this patch, we get the shadow from LoRa, which is fantastic. Some of the other 3D accelerated patches don't give you that. And yeah, it runs silky smooth. In the config file, there are not too many options. You can change the amount of VRAM and also some optimizations. You can enable multi-threaded support as well as disable the bilinear filtering to get some more performance. But yeah, on, an, on a half decent machine, I don't think you should have any issues with the performance. So all in all, I am aware that the CRT shaders, it's not for everyone, but I once was also in the camp of, I gotta have those sharp pixels, you know, that was my setting. I used the OpenGL NB option in DOSBox and I had razor sharp pixels. But yeah, then I played around with my CRT monitor uh, a while ago in a, in, a, in, a, in a video and I saw the difference. Yes, it is sharp, but there is that CRT magic uh, behind the pixels, so to speak. Very thin scan lines and some sort of a fine pattern that with a 4K monitor, you can really see with these shaders. Is it 100% like a real monitor? Of course not, but it's the best that I've seen so far. And it really makes a difference playing the games. It helps, takes you back to those happy times. This version is not released yet. You can download it from the daily build branch of DOSBox staging. I will put a link down below in the video description. And yeah, I encourage you to check it out. It looks absolutely beautiful. If you have a 4K monitor especially, you will see more detail. At 1080p, you will also get a bit of a benefit, but not as much. So here it pays having a decent high resolution monitor. And yeah, also happy about the 3 d effects Voodoo support. There are not too many games under DOS that support the Glide API, but Tomb Raider is the big one. And if you love playing this game, it will look nicer and a little bit smoother with the 3 d effects Voodoo option. So all in all, I'm really happy with this new release. Go check it out. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Always love reading from you. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and yeah, do consider supporting me through Patreon. We have a lot of cool behind the scenes content on there and that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.